We're in uh, Acts 5. Look at verses 12 through 16. Now many signs and wonders were regularly done among the people by the hands of the apostles. Notice who's doing the miracles. Um, in Acts 4.30, we read that the early Christians prayed that God would continue to do signs and wonders through the name of your body, uh, through the name of your holy servant, Jesus, uh, showing that this is a prayer was answered and these remarkable signs and wonders continued. We're not told uh, what these signs and wonders were. They're pro presumably uh, we're going to look through Acts and see, uh, you know, healings and deliverance from demonic powers and unusual blessings. They're all together in so Solomon's portico, Solomon's porch, uh, part of the temple. Often the fact that God's people are together with one accord uh, is a greater display of the power of the Holy Spirit than any particular sign or wonder. Our selfish hearts and stubborn minds can be harder to move than a mountain. If the church grows, it needs unity. Acts 114 to 1 to 26 or 246 and 424. Uh, the believers were of one accord. One accord means being one-minded. It refers to a unified sacrifice together. Uh, how, is, how do we sacrifice together uh, to the Lord and the church? We get rid of the lone ranger mentality. You know, it's we four, no more, and we just stick together, and I'm not going to get to know you. I've got to get to know you, your family. None of the rest dare join them, but the people held them in high esteem. Uh, the church was not designed to be a club with easy membership. It is a serious enlistment in a lifetime commitment. Uh, when we get serious about God's people gathering uh, in the church, then, this is what happens, verse 14, the more than ever believers were added to the church, multitudes of both men and women. God's addition sometimes comes when God subtracts. If your commitment is nominal, then you need to question how you can be part of the overall plan of God. Next verse starts with the results. So that even carried out, they even carried out the sick into the streets and laid them on cots and mats so that Peter came by at least his shadow might fall on them. Uh, don't leave the church. It says, come and be prepared for a great experience. People were so convinced of the reality and power of what God, what the Christians believed, they sought, uh, they thought they uh, could be healed by just having Peter's shadow come over them. Peter didn't heal; Jesus did, and we, we see that repeatedly. Peter was sold out to Jesus. Now Jesus used him. The people also gathered from the towns around Jerusalem, bringing the sick and the afflicted, the unclean spirits, and they are all healed. Uh, this is the first time we hear the work uh, of God's people going beyond Jerusalem.